stayed in Abyssinia. And Abyssinia is believed to, or the core of Abyssinia is believed to be where the highland of Ethiopia is today, the region of Tigray and the region of, uh, or the highlands of Eritrea. The city of Aksum, today found in Ethiopia, was the capital of the kingdom of Abyssinia. Now we know from the narrations in the book of the Imam al-Bukhari that the, this king, this particular king, the Nugus, the Najashi, who welcomed the companions, became a Muslim because when he passed away, the Prophet wasallam performed on him Salat al-Ghaib, that he performed on him Salat al-Janazah in absentia. So, this was the first contact of Islam with the Horn of Africa. We know that the Nugus secretly accepted Islam and it's plausible that others might have also accepted Islam. Today close to the border between Eritrea and Ethiopia, close to the city of Adigrat, for those of you who know the region, there is a mausoleum for a Najashi and people from Ethiopia and Eritrea every year they go in large numbers to visit the grave of Najashi. I'm not saying that right but I'm just stating the fact. So this is the first contact of Islam with the Horn of Africa. So Islam was first introduced to this region while the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in Mecca. So accordingly the first region in which Islam uh, or the first region outside Mecca where Islam was introduced is Abyssinia even before uh, Medina. So this was the, the first contact. After that Islam spread in that region through migration, through trade, and through efforts of scholars and Muslim preachers. Egypt came under Muslim rule during the time of Khalifa Umar ibn al-Khattab. And also the coastal area of Eritrea today came under the Muslim rule. And that opened the door for people to migrate from Arabia. Arabia at that time was economically not as pleasant as it is today and people occasionally used to migrate so large groups of people migrated to Egypt some of them crossed the Red Sea and migrated to Eritrea and Ethiopia and possibly Somalia and through these immigrants Islam started to spread gradually throughout the region. And through the efforts of these immigrants and through trade contacts, through the da'wah, Islam became very prominent in the coastal area of Eritrea, Ethiopia, and, and, and Somalia. And at one time, there were about seven Muslim entities in, in this region, particularly in the area of Somalia, in the area of uh, uh, Eastern Ethiopia, even in Central Ethiopia, in the region known as Shoah today, there was a Muslim entity there. There were seven Muslim kingdoms, seven Muslim entities. The largest among them is the entity or the kingdom known as the Kingdom of Jabarta or the Kingdom of Ifat. So you can see first contact started with the migration of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, and then gradually with the establishment of Islamic rule in Egypt and the Islamic rule in the coastal areas along the Red Sea. Then there was a larger number of immigrants coming and settling in that area and also uh, people who were coming for trade and da'wah, these three 
uh, contributing in the spread of Islam in, in that whole region to the extent that Muslims were uh, large enough in number to establish their own kingdoms in this region. And as, as I, I told you, there were seven important Muslim kingdoms in, in this area. Also, Muslims of the, uh, the Forum of Africa had important scholarly contribution. The city of Harar, anybody is from Harar here? The city of Harar today is, is not a, a well-known city or it doesn't have much significance. But this city is described as being the equivalent of the city of Al-Qairawan. Al-Qairawan is found in North Africa and it was a center of learning and it was a, a city that produced large number of scholars in Islamic history, in, 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 in the past Islamic history. So the city of Harar is considered the equivalent of Al-Qairawan and this city produced many learned people in, in Islam. Now in Al-Azhar there is an area known as Ruwaq al-Jabarta. Ruwaq basically was the area designated for students coming from a certain region. So there was a Ruwaq for Maghariba, those who come from Morocco. There was a Ruwaq, an area designated for people who come from Turkey. There was another Ruwaq for people who come from uh, Kurdistan and so on and so forth. So in Al-Azhar there was a Ruwaq, there was an area that until recently it was known the area of Al-Jabarta and before it used to be known as the, the area of uh, al zayla and Zayla is a port in Somalia today so this, this particular area of residency for students of Al-Azhar uh, was named after Al-Azhar first and then later it was named after Jabarta which was the largest Muslim kingdom in, in, in that region. So there are many scholars who are known as Zayla'i or as Al-Jabarti. And if you come across a name that says such and such as Zayla'i or such and such Al-Jabarti, you know that that person belongs to one of the countries in the Horn of Africa. Three scholars that are noteworthy here is Uthman ibn Ali al Zayla'i and Jamal al Din Abdullah al Zayla'i. Now, Imam al Zayla'i, Jamal al Din al Zayla'i, is a well known scholar and authority in hadith. And scholars describe him as the equivalent of Al Imam al Hafiz al Iraqi. Al Imam al Hafiz al Iraqi is also another outstanding scholar and authority uh, in Islam. He has various books on hadith and uh, he, he is a scholar who comes from that region. Similarly, Uthman ibn Ali al Zayla'i is considered another important scholar and authority in the area of uh, Usul al Fiqh. Abdurrahman al Jabarti is very well known to Egyptians because he is a well-known historian who documented the history of Egypt when Egypt was invaded by Napoleon Bonaparte. So his books are considered to be an important reference for, for, for this particular time of the history of Egypt. So you can see from this, and these are just very quick highlights, that the Horn of Africa made an important contribution in Islamic scholarship and that there were important learning centers for people to, to acquire knowledge and that there were important Islamic uh, sultanates, Islamic entities in, 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 the, in that particular region. Now unfortunately the region has seen a lot of conflict. The lowlands were predominantly Muslims and the highlands were predominantly Christian. And the Christians of Ethiopia are different in a sense they are Coptic Christians. Coptic Christians are found in Egypt 
and they are found in if you